What's up everyone and welcome back to the Bishop Disc Breakdown this week. This is our third Bishop Disc Breakdown where we talk about everything that's going on here in store and around store that Bishop Disc is a part of. So first we're going to start off with our what's going on in our Hollywood Ladder League this week. Yep. Hollywood Ladder League just finished the seventh week out of nine for season one. Uh, we had 22 people play this week which brings our totals to 78 people playing 180 rounds, which is pretty crazy. Um, in the MPO division, Brad Wagner took it down. He beat me by a half a stroke. Uh, also cashing was Dean Slowey and Dan Labulette, who uh, it was his first week playing, so welcome to leave, Dan. Uh, and, and we also had a newcomer do very well. Jeff Kerner uh, took it down with like a 48, which is an excellent score. Uh, then. You know, we've had a weekly battle between Craig Salvador and John G. Pablo. <laughs> they tied this week at 51. And then uh, rounding out the cash, uh, Jason Lavoy and Dan Snyder also tied. Um, another weekly battle, Amanda Borgman edged out Haley this week for Ladies Amateurs. And we had three uh, rec players this week. Uh, Luke Showstead beat out Nick Gannon. I think we had three Showsteads play, so thank you to the Showstead family for having me Woo! you guys. All right, so uh, as week seven and nine, we've got finals coming up on the 10th. That is uh, Sunday coming up, and we're going to have a skins event with the top five people on the ladder. Um, it's going to be super exciting. Everyone's invited out to come watch, come heckle. And uh, if you can't make it but still want to be part of the event, we're going to have offering sponsorships uh, for just 20 bucks, and that will get you, uh, you, your name, your, uh, your small business, your uh, YouTube or Instagram page. Uh, you know, we will tell everybody about it. So if you are interested in being in sponsorships, we're reaching out this week. So we really appreciate your support and up those payouts for the pros that are playing. And for some of the tournaments coming up, we have two tournaments coming up. We are currently a part of one tournament, that is the Minuteman, which is going on. We're in week three, so we are halfway through week three right now, and by the time this is released, uh, we will only have one more week, which will be next week. Uh, and so that will be week four, because it ends on April 10th. So get your scores in soon. Uh, everyone, you have about a week and a half left to get your scores in, go to Borderland, Play blue to blue, play white to blue, um, and then bring those into here so that we can track your scores. You can find your scores uh, either on the Borderland Facebook page or you can find it on bishopdisc.com where you can find the link to the uh, Excel spreadsheet that you'll be able to find what your score is. Um, also, we have the Bishop Bash, which is Friday, April 1st. So that is coming up this week. That's super exciting. We just sign up and then you can find two more card mates uh, to make three people go out and it's going to be a flex start. And that as well as the Rock the Hawk, which is coming up May 7th at Hawkins uh, in Plainville, Massachusetts is the town. And so that's going to be at Hawkins Woods in Plainville, Massachusetts, May 7th. There's still time to sign up. There's about 50 people signed up. So there's still some more spots. You can get a tea time. Uh, that way you can find someone who's maybe two other people who have already signed up for a spot. If you're a solo, you can join in with them. Or if you have a group of three, you can sign up and hopefully a solo will join up with you. Uh, something along the lines of that. So sign up for those. We have a lot of tournaments coming up soon as well. And if you're interested and you have a tournament and you're looking for someone to be to have uh, funny money, a place for uh, your funny money to go for your AMs to be able to help with your tournaments, reach out to us here at Bishop Dis. All of the funny money can go here in store and online as well to be used. So. If you're looking for that, if you're a TD, reach out to us for any future uh, upcoming tournaments that you have coming up in the near future. With that being said, we have uh, some cool things going on with Hollywood as well in a team challenge type of way. That's right. So we're going to start this thing off, you know, by talking about winter team challenge. It is like the most popular thing in disc golf in New England in the winter. There are like 1,500 people that play on numerous teams from the super competitive A pool to the new teams in the playing pool. Um, you get so many people out there. I think they love the team atmosphere. It's a pretty relaxed, 
But that only goes from October to uh, March with finals in April for teams to qualify. And then there's kind of nothing for the summer. So what we decided to do was try something brand new. It's going to be called Hollywood Mini Team Challenge. And basically, instead of like signing up for, um, you know, to play the four months with a huge team, you know, Winter Team Challenge teams are 20 people. The Hollywood Mini Team Challenge, it's only going to be eight people. And there's no like roster requirements. Um, you don't have to, you know, have a certain amount of people on your team. They're going to be almost like one off events. So if you have eight people uh, one month and then you can't play the next month, that's totally fine. Just whatever eight people you want to get together. Uh, and there's going to be one woman per, uh, per roster. So seven guys and one woman playing. Uh, it's going to be singles in the morning. It's going to be like stroke play. Then we're going to take a break and have some lunch and then have doubles in the afternoon. So it's going to be a lot like a uh, team challenge uh, in the format, but it's going to be all stroke play and then uh, the winner is just going to be decided by the cumulative effect of scores. So we have two um, dates on the schedule so far. We've got April 17th at Sunny Mead. In the morning we're going to play singles on the green tees and doubles on the blue tees in the afternoon. Last week we actually filmed a really cool video to um, preview the course and make sure everybody understands the format. That's going to be released really soon. Um, and Sunny Mead is a really cool course to play Hollywood on, um, so it's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to everybody getting out there and trying it out at a different course other than Borderland. And then on May 22nd, we are going to do something similar at Mountainside. Mountainside is in Monson, Massachusetts, um, and that is another super awesome course with two baskets. So the Hollywood uh, kind of layout is going to be super fun, and I'm really looking forward to everybody trying it out. Also some things that have just come in into Bishop Disc are some new discs that we got uh, from Disc Mania. So we have uh, two new releases that came out on May 29th were officially released to stores and retailers everywhere. They called this the beefiest release ever. So we have some big overstable boys here for you. Uh, we have the Splice which is Dismania's fairway driver that they released with a 9304, I believe it is, in that neoplastic from that Evolution line. So we have that for those. Uh, how would you use this if you were lining a splice up? Oh, this would be your overstable fairway driver, so probably some forehands on some flexes. Uh, maybe if you had a ripping headwind, you could throw some backhand, but I'd say mostly, mostly forehand flick. Yeah. If you can't find an FD3 that's you know made by Innova, this Evolution line made by Latitude 64 is going to be the most overstable fairway you can find. There you go. And if you're looking for something that is a little slower but on the same type of beefy boy status, we have the Mutant, the Cybertruck of discs, they would say in some cultures. They have here the 5304 in that neoplastic from the Evolution line as well. Similar to a Justice, would you say? Yeah, it's just a Justice, but it doesn't have any flat edges. This yellow one feels really nice. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some interesting feel to it, but super overstable, really reliable, nice depth, comfortable rim. It's got a bead, but it's not too big. Um, kind of a weird feeling disc, but you know, this is something you need in your bag. A super overstable mid-range is clutch, especially when you're out in the woods, you gotta throw a scramble shot, you know, that kinda goes this way around some trees and then quickly heisers back. You know, it's a specialty slot, you know, the utility slot in your bag, but it's something you gotta have. So, we only got seven of each of these, so you gotta hurry up, come in, buy them uh, online or in store. You can always go to bishopdisc.com order it on the website and then come pick it up in store or we can ship it to you, but these are going to go super quick. Absolutely. We also have tons of Innova, we have tons of uh, Dynamic Discs and Trilogy coming in, and we have, for the first time in store, we will be having Prodigy here. So we're going to have a stand of Prodigy custom Bishop Discs logos on our Prodigy, as well as some other uh, Prodigy throw-ins here and there. So come in if you're a big Prodigy fan, if you're a big Bishop Disc fan, and you've wanted to try Prodigy, we're going to have tons of Bishop Disc stamp Prodigy Disc here in store for the first time ever. So we're going to be locked and loaded here, so get in store 
fast so that you can get your hands on some nice plastic before anyone else can. Yeah, speaking of Bishop Disc, we did have Team Bishop Disc in action this weekend. Andres and I were down at FDR in New York, and we actually got to play together in the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, super fun tournament. It's a big park, so really some diff uh, different disc golf than we're kind of used to up here. Definitely had its wooden section, but some really big open par fours where if you were righty, you got to rip a destroyer, and us lefties were trying to keep up. <laughs> uh, you did beat me in the first round, shooting the seven down to my five down. And then I really struggled in the second round, only shot one down to finish six. That got me for a tie 22nd. But Andres brought it back with another five down to finish at 12 down for the tournament, which uh, was good for a solo seventh place finish. So great job, Andres. Wow. Go, Andres. Uh, yeah, I was a little disappointed with my play, but the nice thing, tournament season is starting up again, and I got another chance to play this weekend coming up at Oak Crest Cove. There's a little seat here, so I'm really looking forward to playing a little more local and getting to sleep in my own bed. I slept on an air mattress and it was terrible. I got a big <laughs> knot in my shoulder. Reminder, if you're over 30, just get bed. Just get bed. Real bed. It's worth it. Smart. All right. And the last segment today, we are going to go over our picks for Shed Zone Spread Zone. Now, we introduced this segment last week uh, where we previewed all the picks that were coming up for Texas States. Um, and we're gonna go over them now, like who won each uh, each spread and who, which one we picked. Um, how did you enjoy ha the spread zone picks? It gets you a lot more involved into the weekend for sure. You're you're keeping track. You're not just looking at who's at the top. You're like, oh, where are my picks doing? Like sometimes you're scrolling a little bit, basically all the way to the bottom, just to see, you know how uh, some of the, the dark horse picks are doing. Um, it's, it's real exciting. It's, it, it keeps things interesting. Yeah, every, you know, every, uh, every card has somebody you're paying attention to, and I, mm. I am totally loving Shed Zone. I'm also rocking my Shed Zone Spread Zone t-shirt that I got from the boys when I saw them this weekend because I had the most picks right last week. So let's go over uh, the picks and see how we did this week. All right, the first pick was Luke Humphreys favored one and a half over Nico LaCastro. Both of us picked Nico, and that was correct. Nico finished 13 down to Luke's seventh down, so great cover, Nico. Way to show up. The next one, probably the most, the closest and most exciting one, mm. Casey White was favored by five and a half over Brody Smith. I took Casey. Matt took Brody. Casey finished at 13 down to Brody's 7 down, <laughs> thus beating him by 6 mm -hmm. for like an awesome cover. Like This is kind of the shed zone at its finest. They weren't up at the top. They both did really well. Casey shot in 13. I think that was good for like 14th place. And Brody did pretty well too. So it's not right at the top of the leaderboard, but you're scrolling down and you're just like seeing how they did. And it's super exciting. Every day I'll be checking against my spreads. And awesome cover by Casey. Super exciting. Uh, the next one, Calvin was favored by six and a half over Bro uh, Bradley Williams. Now Matt took Bradley, I took Calvin, I said he was going to have a big uh, breakout tournament and he certainly did. He finished mm -hmm. in second place, only one back from the winner and it was super exciting. Brad uh, Bradley did not play so well, he mm -hmm. finished at plus two so uh, Calvin easily covered the six and a half spread by winning by 30. So, uh, <laughs> great job, Calvin. Um, Only quintupled what he was supposed to do. Yeah, right, exactly. Thanks, Calvin. Um, so, the next one was Thomas Gilbert favored two and a half against Alex Russell. Matt took uh, Thomas, I took Alex, and uh, Thomas was playing okay, but ended up having to DNF the last round. So, uh, that was pretty much an automatic cover for me, Alex Russell. I think he was with, he was beating him pretty good anyways. I think uh, Thomas was a couple over par, so I got that one as well. Uh, the next one, we thought this was going to be the easiest one. Kevin Jones favored seven over Adam Hammes. We both picked Adam Hammes, and we were right, but the spread was actually really close. Mm -hmm. The spread was seven, and Kevin won by five. So, you know, great math, great job, Eco, setting up a great line on that one. Uh, next one coming up, Chris Dickerson was favored three and a half over James Conrad. Uh, we both chose Chris and we were both wrong mm -hmm. because James beat him shooting a 21 down to Chris's 
15 down, so awesome to see James kind of get back on track and really kick some butt, be on the lead card. He's just like the nicest guy, and it's impossible not to be a mm. fan of James Conrad, so nice job, James. I think that was the most unsuspecting one for me. I could have, I definitely thought Chris was going to continue to roll. He, he played well, but James, just brought, James just brought it back. He is a world champion after all. Uh, then Colton Montgomery was favored two and a half over Connor O'Reilly. I picked Connor. Matt picked Colton. Uh, Connor beat Colton by seven. So not only did he cover, he beat him pretty uh, bad. Pretty bad. Uh, Connor, the Texas guy, got to represent in his home state. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one, the only FPO, Matt or uh, Paige Pierce was favored by 15 over Holly Finley. And Matt picked Paige. I picked Holly because I thought the course was going to be in the woods and it turned out that they changed the layout and they only played four of the same holes from the original layout and the other 14 were like pretty open and Paige crushed her. She shot a 17 down to win the tournament. Uh, Holly was pretty close. I think she was down 11 going into that final day but then had a really tough start. I think back to back which were the bogeys. So Paige ended up beating her by 28, easily covering the spread. Uh, so Matt got that one and I did not. That was uh, really tough. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, Ricky was uh, picked by uh, two to cover against the entire field. So if we remember, I picked Ricky to win the tournament but not cover. I said he was going to win by one and he did. I was right. I nailed it. And Matt also thought uh, Ricky was not going to cover, and he didn't, so we were both right on that one. Pretty good. So I ended up getting seven right, Matt got four, uh, but yeah, I loved picking the shed picks, and I'm really looking forward to the next TGPT event, which isn't until the end of April when they go to Kansas for a dynamic disc open. So we're going to get a little break for Shed Zone, but I would really recommend you go to their channel give it a like and subscribe, watch their episodes. They're super funny guys, and they put a lot of work into these spreads, and really, they were almost all right on. So, mm -hmm. great job, Shed, and we're looking forward to the next one. Absolutely, yeah, so tune in to them and follow them on YouTube, subscribe, follow them on Instagram, everywhere you can find it. Simon Lazat even said that it's his favorite uh, YouTube show out there right now. Yeah, though, Ricky, is... Ricky loves it. There's yeah. a lot of the pros are kind of buying into Shed, so really fun it's gonna be a cool thing to watch grow and get bigger it's gonna be cool so thanks for tuning in again here to the bishop disc breakdown this week we'll be back next week to let you know of everything that is going on we'll have the final scores from the bishop bash next week and as well as some new tournaments that are coming up and some new announcements new discs new things happening here at bishop disc thanks for following along hit subscribe if you haven't already and follow us everywhere that you can and we'll see you next week peace